Right now for more on women's football across the continent, I'm joined in studio by Isaac Swila, sports editor at Royal Media Services here in Kenya. Uh, Isaac, obviously the biggest blow it seems to be to women's football has been a lack of resources. How maybe does Africa now solve this problem going forward? Uh, thank you, Mahia, for having me on studio. Yeah, as you've rightfully put it, is that uh, African football, more so that touching on women, seem to be facing a lot of difficulties, mm -hmm. and more so the financial aspect of it. But uh, from where I sit, I think there's a lot of potential, not just uh, in Kenyan women uh, football or Nigerian women football, the South Africa, but across the continent. Mm -hmm. But finances seems to be the archives hill. But uh, I don't think really that respective regimes like uh, uh, finances to pump into women football. But I think there's a lot of uh, lack of the goodwill, the political goodwill that is. Because if you look across a continent, uh, women football is treated as a second thought. Mm. It's on the periphery. Uh, people don't really think of it as a big game changer or as a, a multi-billion dollar industry. And we see it every single day not here, not in South Africa, not in Ghana. But I think there is a lot of cash, but the, there's a lot of uh, lack of will, which is lacking. So for us to take it forward, first of all, there has to be change in leadership, change in uh, the policy makers, change in uh, federations, and stakeholders at large. Mm -hmm. You and I included the journalists to go to the field to cover this game. Uh, many a times we go to the stadium or the stadia to watch our women, for instance, the Arambi Starlets who have just done as proud in the Sekafa. But you find the stadium is yawning. Take, for instance, when they last played their game here. Mm. Uh, free entry, but the numbers uh, leaves a lot to be desired. Then again, the cases we've had about allowances and paid bonuses staggering up to last year. And it explains why it is not growing. I don't think cash is the problem. It is there. Touching on that, uh, Nigeria obviously has been one of the dominant forces when it comes to women's football. Mm -hmm. Is it a case of Nigeria doing something right or the rest of the continent doing something wrong? Both answers are right. Why? Nigeria, if you follow through, have won uh, the title 11 times. Mm -hmm. That's a record. Uh, the first edition held in 1991, they were the champions. And if you follow through, the only team that has uh, broken their dominance at one point or the other is Equatorial Guinea in 2008 and 2012. Mm -hmm. All the rest of the titles have been swept by the Nigeria. Now, if you go and look at uh, the Nigerian uh, Women Premier League, it's quite robust. Very strong teams like uh, uh, Delta Queens, for instance, uh, always winning the title. Then you look at the structures in there. There's a lot of goodwill, a lot of talents coming through the academies, and their league is one of the uh, vibrant ones in Africa for that matter. And rightfully so, we can see the results trickling in at the continental level. So for any team to beat them or to challenge their dominance, they have to invest in the women football, get the facilities right, and Nigeria has a lot of stadia, get coaches who are really passionate about women football, to work day in, day out with those youngsters. So if you compare the Nigerian situation with the Kenyan situation, you're going to see a lot of uh, differences. Because today, mm -hmm. Vihiga Queens were being crowned as uh, the league champions of the Women Premier League. Right. Yeah, But where was this? In Kitale. Federation chiefs were not there. There isn't pomp and color. What are they taking home after playing all these matches over a time span of eight months? You find there's nothing much to take at home. So if you compare the Kenya situation in Nigeria, there's a lot of diff uh, difference. I want to touch on Kenya because mm -hmm. you did mention the, the national women's team. Uh, we recently saw them just come a game short mm -hmm. of Tokyo 2020 qualification before then making uh, Kenya proud uh, with the regional Sekafa crown. Maybe what needs to happen uh, to give the chance, uh, a qualification chance to the 2023 Women's World Cup? I'll go back to my first point. Yes, there's a lot of talent. Uh, before we put in place a functional league like we're having now, uh, we could just see the national team head coach come forward and cobble up players here and there. But despite that, they did very well. Remember, we made an appearance at the Alcon uh, two, three years ago in Ghana, and we did pretty well, though we didn't get out of the group stages. This year, we've been agonizing close, agonizingly close to qualifying for the Olympics. Then you look at that squad, it was totally different one. 
from the one we had in Ghana, somebody like Gentrix Shikangwa. She wasn't in the previous squad. Look at uh, Mwanalima Dogo Adam. Uh, Ace Akida is not in the squad right now. But look at how they did fairly well mm. winning the Sekafa uh, women uh, title. But now, if you come back, you heard the Federation chief make a lot of noise not long ago. This team was on the brink of missing a qualifier, Olympic qualifier against uh, Zambia. The Federation chief had to make lots of noise, yet we know they are fans. So for us to go forward, first of all, we have to set in motion structures from the grassroots. Right now, yes, we have uh, the senior women league, but beneath it, is there a second tire? Do we have a third tire? Do we have these clubs like Vihiga Queens, Thika Queens, for instance, do they have youth academies that is going to nurture talent so that they become the conveyor belt so that Coach David Ouma can be spoiled for choice? I walk, he walks into Vihiga Queens, there are three, four players good in one position. He goes to Thika the same, and this is what we want. So there must be structures. The government must pump in lots of money there. The Federation Chiefs must be accountable. Every coin that we get should go towards nurturing this talent and ensure that the coaches that train these youngsters also have the requisite qualification. All right, uh, Isaac Swila, thank you very much for joining us here on Sports Scene. Uh, sports editor with Royal Media Services, Isaac Swila, joining us, talking more about the African women's football situation across the country.